In this tutorial, we will go step by step on how to draw the Gibbs Cam flange. We're going to draw this flange in 2D wireframe geometry. Let's familiarize ourselves with some of the dimensions before we go over to Gibbs Cam. The part is an inch and a quarter tall. It has three holes in it, two holes that are five eighths, one hole that is one inch. The two five eighths holes are two and a half inches on centers. There's a boss on the top left and the top right. The height of the part again is an inch and a quarter and there's a step here of a quarter of an inch and another step here of a quarter of an inch. There's a chamfer here, a chamfer here, and a chamfer on each of the holes. Let's go to Gibbs Cam and draw the center points of these three circles first. The first hole that we will draw will be, of course, the center point of the first hole. We're going to put that right in the middle of the part. That is geometry palette, point, explicit, x0, y0, z0. This is the do it button. There is a point there. If it's hard to see, turn off your coordinate system marker. We will leave the coordinate system marker off for the rest of this lesson since we will be working in three axis vertical mill. We need two more points, one here and one there. We know that the centers are two and a half. If you'd like, we can type in 2.5 divided by two equals because every data field in Gibbs Cam is a calculator and we will put one point at an inch and a quarter. Click here, press home and minus and we now have another point after we press the do it button at x minus one and a quarter. The center hole is one inch and these two holes are five eighths. Pressing the return button will take us back to the main level geometry palette. We will click circle, radius and center point. It's asking for a center point. Click the center point, type in the radius of the circle. Since we know that the diameter was 0.625, we can type in either 0.3125 or 0.625 divided by two. And make sure you either press tab or equals. Don't press enter when calculating numbers in Gibbs Cam, because if a do it button is lit, it may do something that you didn't expect. Now we will click the do it button and we just drew one circle at 312 and a half. What if we wanted to draw both of those circles at the same time? I'm going to click undo and click the other center point and click do it and we now have two 5.8 diameter holes. We're going to drill the one inch hole right here in the middle. The radius is a half an inch. We now have a pretty good perspective of what this part looks like. We're now going to draw the three outside circles. Let's go back to the drawing and see. We have a radius of one inch. Let's draw the outside circle. Circle, radius and center point, it's asking for a center point. We click the center point, enter the radius of one, and click do it. Back to the drawing, these two radii are three quarters. Change the radius to 0.75. Click these two points, making sure that you hold down the control key, and click the do it button. We now have the basic outside shape of the part and we need to connect it with the fillets here, 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 and here. Let's go back to the drawing and see what the fillets are. They're 1 inch 875. Now, notice that there is not a button that says draw a circle between two circles. That's because in Gibbs Cam we want to do more with less. We give you less buttons, but we give you more automatic functions. We're simply going to click this circle here and this circle here with the control key down 
and when we click the circle tool, an automatic function comes up. And it has circle 5 and circle 4 loaded in. We simply type in the radius and press the do it button and we will get all of the tangency possibilities of a 1 and 875 circle between this circle and this circle. The circle that we want to keep is this one and it says select desired features. Click the desired feature and OK. We're going to work our way around the part. It would be nice if we could connect them all together at one time, but connecting is item specific and must be done one part at a time. Let's now select this circle and this circle with the control key. Press the do it button and that's the fillet we want to keep. Select the fillet and press OK. Everything looks nice. It automatically trimmed that fillet with these two circles. If we go back over to our drawing, we have completed this part of the drawing. But we have an issue. This circle disappeared and we have nothing to connect or to put a fillet between. Let's click on this circle and go to Modify, Duplicate and the circle is now duplicated. We can click those two circles, press do it again, click the fillet that we want to keep and OK. The duplicate button may be used on any piece of geometry instead of having to go back and redraw it again. Notice that when it trimmed, this arc is backwards. That can be fixed with modify reverse arc. Let's complete the outside of the drawing by clicking this circle. We have to unselect the other circles first. Go back to circle. Click this circle and this circle. Our automatic function comes up. Our value is still there. We click do it and select the fillet that we want to keep and OK. We have finished the outside shape of the part. And remember, we need to do a reverse arc here. You can either do it with modify reverse arc, or if your left hand is not busy, do control T. Control T is a shortcut for reverse arc. We are now almost finished with drawing this part. This is the outside shape of the part. But there is a step here and if you would take the measurements, you'll find out that that step is an eighth of an inch in on either side. If you measure this radius and this radius, you'll find that the step is an eighth of an inch in. We can create that all at one time by double clicking the outside geometry, select geometry, offset. Set the offset distance to 0.125 and turn off square corners. When you press do it, you will get two copies of the offset shape. We don't need the outside copy, so we'll throw it in the trash can. This is all of the geometry that we need to machine this flange part. It's now time to start machining. Let's go to isometric view and no zoom and notice that there are a few construction points out here in the air that Gibbscam used to create these arcs. Let's go to Tools and Cam and let's throw away all of the operations that we have here because we're going to start from scratch. The first thing that we need to do is determine how much material needs to be faced off of the top of the part. If we go to front view, this gray box is the stock. Where does the stock come from in this case? It comes from document control. We have a quarter of an inch of extra stock on the top of this part that we need to face off. Back to isometric view and no zoom. No zoom or unzoom fits the drawing to your screen. There's another unzoom button here and if you would like to do a control U on your keyboard, you may use that as well. 